Hi, good evening everybody. Uh, I would be talking on peripheral refraction uh, theory and practical of what exactly is peripheral refraction and where do we want to do it. But before we embark on the journey of knowing more about peripheral refraction, let us uh, see or let us start with a theory, uh, with a story of a young boy who presented to us with myopia in uh, 2021 post covid so a lot of children actually post covid uh, came to us with uh, myopia most of or rather all of us have a set of patients who presented uh, after post covid probably because of near work or probably uh, you know because of a lot of uh, uh, watching television or maybe because they were indoors and they were reading a lot but this patient typically presented with a straightforward simple myopia of minus 1.25 and uh, 1.5 adapter sphere and uh, the child was a full term birth father had myopia but otherwise there was nothing significant single uh, one of the parent had myopia we did our myopia workup we took axial lens near point of accommodation that we would normally do and then we called the patient to come back again after three months and we did explain the patient that you know because of uh, the more near work or the more indoor uh, timing that uh, because of COVID it has happened is probably causing uh, the progression of myopia or causing the myopia in itself in first place. So uh, the patient followed up in September 2021 and normally you know patients of myopia do not come back to you once you give them glasses because they are now happy with glasses and uh, now they can see better so they typically don't come back again after three months they come back when they are now not able to use their glasses to look for distance or their glasses have broken so patient came back after six months we started them on low concentration atropine because we saw that there was an axial progression we followed the kid in uh, jan 2021 july 2022 uh, and then we in, at that point of time we thought that uh, you know the axial length was still increasing so we thought that probably we are you know we are missing out something and we then thought of doing a peripheral refraction now here uh, we should first understand how does peripheral refraction influence the eyes so uh, starting from uh, i think one of the landmark articles or uh, i should say uh, the the whole story started mostly from this particular work of uh, dr earl smith three uh, who uh, did foveal ablation on emetropic uh, macau monkeys and found that it is actually the peripheral retina which is responsible for uh, the axial uh, elongation of the eye and he had a lot of follow-ups of these articles 2007 2009 2010 so practically what he was showing was that because of the relative peripheral hyperopia as you can see here in this particular picture because there is a relative hyperopia here, the, the eyeball tries to sort of catch up to this particular point and thereby increases in size. So you can see that the myop this is this would be the treatment part of it, the myopic defocus. But this is uh, this is the peripheral hyperopic defocus, which is altering the central uh, refractive development in infant monkeys. Now this, this was uh, you can do. Uh, a peripheral refraction easily with an open field auto refractor we did not have it at that point of time so we uh, tried to uh, make our own uh, uh, sort of uh, peripheral refractive aid and this is what we came up uh, this uh, this i had made it in uh, our own clinic and then we got it 3d printed we sort of uh, tried to find out uh, what can be done and this is how uh, it looked we now have some modifications to it. Uh, we have actually angulated the whole thing. But at this point of time, I would say that you know this was uh, this was quite a useful device. You can fit it in the uh, retinoscope, and you can ask the patient to look on either side. And that is what we did with the kid, and we tried to find out what was the peripheral refraction. You can see that you know whether you whether you move the head or you move the eyes. Uh, doesn't make a difference but you can't move both so you have to ask the patient to look at these peripheral fixation points now we have got leds so now it is much easier uh, there is an angulation there is uh, there are leds so the kid can easily focus on these two peripheral areas
business and how did this make an impact now uh, we all know that you know this we already discussed and uh, we we could see that there was indeed a peripheral hyperopic uh, hyperopic uh, refractive error and uh, this is uh, this probably was uh, causing all the problem uh, and so we uh, we gave them a halt lens which definitely helped so this was a peripheral defocus lens what would a peripheral defocus lens do a peripheral defocus lens would basically convert this peripheral hyperopic defocus into peripheral myopic defocus because this peripheral defocus lens has lens slits or has a, a relative plus 3.5 diopter power which will create a myopic defocus so this was uh, this was a small uh, small work which we did on peripheral refraction we compared uh, progressive myopic children obviously we were trying to compare them and we found that uh, you know the temporal part had slightly more hyperopia uh, compared to nasal but uh, definitely nasal part also had hyperopia and this was uh, in um, non progressive uh, myopic children which did not have much of uh, uh, hyperopic uh, dv hyperopic uh, refraction in periphery uh, so uh, that's all regarding peripheral hyperopic uh, deviation or peripheral hyperopic refraction and i would like to take this opportunity to invite you to posn5 grand rounds which are at baroda and we at baroda at gujarat are uh, doing this uh, grand rounds on 23rd and 24th september so thank you so much for the opportunity